More than 36 new anime have premiered in the fall 2023 season, and there are some heavy hitters. Now that each show has had one episode out, let's see how these premieres stack up against each other. Since some came out swinging, and others, well, they barely made it out. Anime Disrobed here, back with another seasonal ranking. We have some bangers, and we have some, well, dumpster fires. So let's start off with the bangers. I won't waste your time here and muddle through the trash first, so let's get into the best anime out there. In our first tier, Diamond. Whether it be a diamond in the rough, or so bright it blinds you, these new anime are some of the must watch this season. Starting the diamond tier off right is Free Run. You already know it's going to be a good one when the first episode nearly had me in tears. Fine, it did have me in tears. As we follow the elf mage Free Run after she helped defeat the world's great evil alongside the hero and her friends. Instead of seeing the journey of her beating the big bad, we get what is life after that? accompanying her on her journey to meet people and build connections with those she sees, as well as any comedic moments she gets into along the way. We have a rich fantasy setting giving us wonderfully animated moments of magic to be paired with a rich world where we have elves, dwarves, and who knows what else to see along our journey. Although she may be reserved and quiet in the beginning, having her open up to the people and the world is half of the fun. She does seem to get paired with some more energetic characters to balance out this dynamic. Great animation, some interesting characters, and a vibrant world, this is 100% worthy of the diamond tier. So don't let yourself get caught by a mimic and make sure to keep up with Free Run on her journey of self-discovery. Kicking their way into diamond tier is Shangri-La Frontier. If you play games, you know what a trash game is, but you might not be a trash game hunter like our protagonist here, Rakuro, as he goes out of his way to find the worst games to beat. Couldn't be me, I try to avoid any trash games. Well, he finally decides to try a good one, and that's what we get to view. Although, I would have been mad at viewing a bad game just for a bit. The game in question is Shangri La Frontier. Yep, that's the title. And yes, that's him, the Birdman. Although, it's just a mask. This action adventure anime will have you wanting to pick up the sticks and play some games. With some great looking animation, a comedic main character, as he starts the anime off by drop kicking the game's princess. If that's not peak comedy, then lock me up. You won't need a lot of clues to figure out what the next one is, as we have Ron Kamonohashi's Forbidden Deductions, which I will be calling Forbidden Deductions from now on since that's way too long. Imagine if he killed every murderer in the world, there would be no murders. Well, that's exactly what happens when Ron is on the case. A genius and a fit one at that who can't control solving a case and also can't control his supernatural powers that takes over, causing him to convince the killer, hey, why don't you go, you know? Thankfully, we have Ishiki, a police officer that is as dumb as he is endearing, as he's hanging onto his job by a thread. Their comedy is very much Sherlock and Watson, with Ron being Sherlock and having a condescending attitude while also putting others at risk without their knowledge. They balance each other out well to have an enjoyable experience while also looking quite nice. So if you wanted some mystery, murder, and even more deductions, this is a show for you, as you're not forbidden from checking out forbidden deductions. Taking our fourth spot here in diamond tier is overtake. Oh man, the cars, the people, just stunning. We got two racing anime this season and this looks to take the first spot. We have Asahina being behind the sticks and Madoka being behind the lens. Eh, not as glamorous as driving, but these two will join forces to take the family run motor team over the finish line even if they have to push it through. Our photographer seems to have a wild backstory and the family run business has a wider range of cast given a well-rounded dynamic. The first episode sets up what we expect the race to look at, but also sets up rivalries we expect to see throughout the show. Although some of the racing animation does suffer, the characters look and sound amazing. So don't let this one pass you up as Overtake rolls through this season. So count yourself lucky as we round up the list with Undead Unluck. We have two characters, one that can't die and one that turns all your luck on its head. And this pairing is one of the best of the season. Our Andy, a terrible name, but let's continue is hilarious pervert who'll be the main man behind all of the action. Whether it be flying through the air or kicking heads off, this man won't die but desperately wants to. Meanwhile, our innocent cutie pie here wants to get rid of her bad luck and just have connections. With a deep world as those with powers is normalized, the thought is, what other unpowers out there in the world? What unpower would you want? You already know this one is going to be action packed so if you needed some zombie fighting, here it is. The main negative about the show? is that it's on Hulu. But if you're a sailor, that may not be of great concern. 
We got P for Platinum up next. These shows are still one of the best to come out this season, but unfortunately, not enough to take the top spots. Step on me harder. That's the entire anime. Rei is a worker who plays games in her free time, but instead of being in love with one of the main heroes of the story, she's in love with the villainess of the story. So when she gets reincarnated into the game, all she wants is for Claire to fall in love with her and continue bullying her. This has to be one of the funniest anime this season, as Rei is just absolutely ridiculous in her attempts to court Claire. A great comedy anime that you just have to see to fully understand just how extra Rey can be and how hilarious it is. And all of this in a school setting, so you already know we get those classic school shenanigans. Oh, this one is truly on fire. We have Firefighter Daigo, and nothing is putting out these flames. An actual anime just on firefighters? Oh, sign me up. But don't go setting your house on fire, these firefighters are only in the anime. This one is great since we get a realistic look about what firefighters have to go through. No world building needed, just straight up fires and training. You would think by the title we follow Daigo, but they do a good old switch on you, and at least for the first episode, we're following Shun, as our main trio, Daigo, Shun, and Yuki are all trying to become their best in the business. I was amazed with the animation and the characters as I could feel their struggles from the screen. And Daigo is such a heartwarming character, he just makes you really want to watch the show. But make sure to turn off your stove because it's already getting hot in here as Firefighter Daigo drops into Platinum. This one hurt. Oh, the pain. We got witches that are supposed to take care of humans with their magic. But as humans do, they decide to go on a massive witch hunt, exterminating all witches and magic from the world. Our protagonist here is human, but raised by a witch, so he's able to use magic. And after a tragic display of barbaric power from the humans, he vows to destroy all humans one day. I can't even blame him. Join Adonis on his quest to avenge poor Chloe as he exterminates humans left and right. The world is crazy deep as it's technically developed, but doesn't have that look of what you expect from a developed world. The animation is solid with the magic and the pain they make you feel off the bat is enough to warrant watching the full season by itself. So don't ruin your chance at a wonderful anime and catch the kingdoms of ruin. Heroes have arrived and no, it's not my hero. We follow our shy hero, Shy, as she tries to overcome her inability to dress people as she is Japan's hero. How does one hero protect an entire country? Well, you have to stick around to find out. Her name is a little on the nose, but she's an overall cute character and an interesting world just to see what other powers are out there and how they interact with humans. It doesn't quite live up to other great hero anime, but it looks pretty good and shy's interesting enough to make us come back for more. And who knows, maybe she'll be able to get out of her shell and defeat the great villain that is being shy. Consuming its way onto our list here is Berserk of Gluttony. Fate's ability is to never be full, just eat a lot of food. Oh, he's also able to take the skills of anything he kills, making him just an absolute killing machine. After getting his first kill and picking up a sword that has its own special attribute, we get to see this once weakling become an absolute monster on their path to leave their miserable life behind. The world is comically evil as the bad guys just ooze atrocities, but at least they keep it simple about who's bad and who's not. With this animation and actually a nice character, this is very much worthy of its platinum spot. So check out what fate has in store for you on Berserk of Gluttony. Now we got gold, all good anime in their own right, but unfortunately falling short of the diamond and platinum ranks. You might want to time travel to see this one again, as we have Ragnar Crimson up next. After failing to save his loved one, Ragnar travels the world demolishing dragons one after another. So much so that his infuse got fused with silver. He was so cold he literally became a weapon. Now he's back in the past with his future OP skills to try to kill the dragon god. The animation looks a bit ashy since the colors don't pop, but with great action, a rich world, and a decent main character, this one starts us off in gold tier. Cuteness overload personifies this anime. We have a family of boys just making it through the world, but look at the youngest, the most adorable there is. If you're looking for a cute, wholesome slice of life, look no further than Yuzuki family. And we have a group of four sibling boys who need to make their way through the world after their parents pass away. Anime just hates parents. So all their journey is how they help or hinder each other as they move through life. With any slice of life, you know there's no overall plot, but it's just nice to see what this family's going through. And if you need something to wind down after a long day, this is perfect to put on. Now we have 16-bit sensation, another layer. And this anime has a ton of layers. All she wants to do is draw beautiful girls in Bishoujo games. A great dream, I'm not knocking it. Unfortunately, the company she works at loves putting out trash games, not giving her the chance to shine that she's always wanted. 
but one day she walks into the past and is now given the opportunity to create the path for beautiful girls that she's always wanted. As Akisato is incredibly passionate and it's enjoyable to see her passion through the screen. As with any time travel anime, how will her actions impact the future and what will occur? Would you have to wait to find out if she'll ever get the beautiful princess future she dreams of? All of this surrounded by grey animation and the hilarious main character has it solidly in gold tier. Continuing the road time travel, we have a returner's magic should be special. After getting decimated, our main character goes back in time to do it again. Or do it better. Let's hope they do it better. The story is something we have seen before, going back in time to do it again. Since the first episode is mainly a prequel, I say don't move on so fast, as we have pretty good animation with the magic and well done characters. Everything except the enemy. They can never get the enemy right. But he doesn't look as bad as the others, which leaves us enough intrigue in a school setting so we know what we're getting into, but hopefully can still be pleasantly surprised. This is ridiculous. That's exactly the thought after the first episode. Twins, Migi and Dali, need to get adopted, but this well off family will only take one child. They hatch a plan to live a life as one child. That means during dinner, they swap places so the other can eat, but the parents don't know. Their intelligence and agility are off the charts. Plus, there are fantastic moments, such as the wife going, Shit! This is one of the anime that surprised me the most this season. And trust me, you won't want to miss what these twins pull next and how. Just barely making it out of bronze, we have silver. My daughter left the nest and returned an S rank adventurer. You would think this is an isekai by the title, but I promise you it's not. Elgrave here just wants to chill after losing a leg, but then he finds an abandoned child. And now she's incredibly strong and working for an abusive guild. Well, they don't call the guild abusive, but the entire premise of the show is that she's trying to get some time off to see her father. And every time time off comes, it's either whisked away for one reason or another. Maybe there are monsters too strong for other people. Maybe she decided to help someone with that time instead and lost it. Anyways, if you think you will see the reunion, think again until the next episode. With that said, it's still lighthearted and has mid animation, but it's a cute story as she's really just trying to have some time to go see her family. Not my favorite on the list, but if you want some action, this is a solid choice as it starts off our silver tier. Slice Life fans, stand up. You know what you're getting here, a bunch of small adventures of our main characters here at work with his goofy boss. And when they say goofy, they mean it. Whether it be mishearing and patting his coworker on the head, or being absolutely adorable and running to get menstruating medicine, for a sick co-worker because that's what he gets his girlfriend. The boss is an absolute gem and thankfully for a poor Momose here, that's exactly what he needs since this man was abused way too much in his past work. Nothing crazy about the animation or the story, but that's a slice of life, a nice calm show after a long day. A ninja in modern day society. Actually, there's a lot of ninjas. As the main character Kuro is given his task to go undercover as a ninja in high school to protect the country from threats. What threats? I have no idea. I honestly don't know what to make of this show one episode in. It's so weird but has great comedic moments and they actually do some ninja moving around but it's hard to take this show incredibly serious. But I've been enjoying it as it's a slice of life you know what you're getting. Getting and having one girlfriend is hard enough. Having a hundred is impossible. Well that's what's gonna have to happen here. After being rejected a hundred times, that is a terrible record by the way, we find out that our main character has a hundred soulmates out there. And now he can't reject one of these girls because if he does, they just die. Talk about a ridiculous premise. This is exactly what we expect from a parody in Harem, as the girls just fall in love with him right away for no actual reason. The animation is actually very solid which I did not expect, but the characters are kinda mediocre. But if you want a ridiculous romance anime to chow down on, and you don't mind a harem, then this is definitely one of the better for this season. The Dark Lord is… a little boy? Well, after sleeping for a thousand years, life has changed. So to get acclimated to his new life, he decides to go to school. What an unfortunate choice. The story is exactly what you would expect, nothing exceptional, and the animation is meh. The characters look average, but the monsters look terrible. But we got girls with guns here, so we got that. Almost the lowest of the low, we got the bronze tier. Playing game, but purposely being weak, then having that weakness become your strength? Typical anime. A ludicrous way to play a game unless you're a challenger runner, but that's the way Taichi decides to play the game. He chooses to be weak so others don't want to play with him and join his party, but then he joins a goddamn party in the first episode. Well, the ridiculous plot side, another video game anime that doesn't look as good or have as good of characters as Shangri-La, but if you want a fantasy anime, then you are actually in decent hands. Ah, in Isekai. But it's actually okay as far as isekai goes. 
We have the typical God made a mistake and now our protagonist here gets an OP move in another world. Our protagonist chooses potions and can make just anything in the form of potions. Now we get to see her solve issues in this new world with just her potions. As we actually get a smart protagonist that's a think their way through problems instead of punch munch magic. So if you want some action in your isekai, this probably isn't for you, but with adorable characters and a main character that has a brain and actually uses it for good, this pickup is good for any isekai fan. Although with such an OP ability, you may want to yell at your TV a hundred different solutions, but that's part of the liberty here, as there are in infinite ways things can go wrong, but also infinite ways that she can make it go right. The animation is lackluster, but her characters more than make up for it thus far. If you're a fan of Initial D, you'll probably enjoy MF Ghost. We got racing and cars. We got cars and racing. Cars switch from looking out of place to decent, which is unfortunate. It's so low because the people don't look great either. I just can't stand looking at them. As well as this racing anime had about like a minute and a half of racing in the first episode, so it makes it harder to have this up. That and unlike Overtake, this had no other races introduced, but if you just want some racing anime, you'll probably like this one. A cute slice of life that is pretty funny, we have the witch who finds a human, except their looks are reversed. It's a slice of life, so you know what you're getting into, just random moments of their lives, having a good time, and this is a pretty chill one. Although the daughter is a little overprotective, the comedy is spot on, just look at this phoenix. Too funny. Shouldn't the vampire accidentally becomes a general in a never ending war? Literally, they just have war for fun since no one can die as they fight in the middle of this huge country. Incredibly messed up, but an interesting premise since vampires kill each other for power and she's incredibly weak. So she needs to hide her weakness, which is pretty hard to do with her maid, as her maid and her have an actual funny relationship. You have your typical fan service, comedic moments, but the world combined with his maid make this a pretty good watch. Low priority, as in if you have anything else to do with your life, do it. But alright, let's speed run through low priority. Alan, a mage, finds a noble lady getting chased. After saving her, since who doesn't save a lady in distress, he decides to teach her about all the good things in life, since something she does for fun is count grains in the wood. Yikes, that must have been an incredibly boring life. Well, Alan agrees and spoils her rotten, pretty much just going on the best dates you can think of, time after time. A solid romance, but I'm not a fan of either character too much, which unfortunately is incredibly important in a romance anime. Umika can barely talk to people, and by barely, I mean she has no friends. No one on this planet can understand her, so she looks towards the stars. As if the stars look back, a transfer student claims she's an alien. So in comes you with her powers. Her power is to feel your feelings by touching foreheads together. A cute little school comedy show that will probably go under the radar for most, but it's actually pretty decent. The girls have a good dynamic since one is loud and the other one isn't, which can leave you warm and fuzzy after watching it, with okay animation to go along with it. Back up to the French Revolution where everyone is getting their goddamn heads chopped off. Well, that's the story here, except our villainous princess learns from her mistakes like Tony Stark. As she goes back in time before her empire fell and the people chopped her head off to try to prevent that from happening again. The animation isn't great, but the story is interesting enough to see how she will go make them people now want to take her head. Unfortunately, I'm not the biggest fan of the main character since she can be pretty annoying since that's her bratty side as this princess. We hope to grow with her as she becomes a better person, but it's meh. Creatures are terrorizing the land and holy shit, they are terrorizing your screen. You hate to see such terribly animated creatures when the people actually look decent. The story is them defending an island since people can't live there due to these creatures, which is unfortunate since the animation is decent overall, there's good intrigue and mystery about the current world, and it's a mech anime, you gotta love some mech animes. Our dating story, the inexperienced you and the experienced me. This one is a weird one. It can be wholesome or weird depending on how you view it. We have an experienced girl who sleeps with all her boyfriends immediately since that's what she thinks is expected of her. That's a lot of trauma to process, but let's keep going. And a nervous guy that only asked her out because he was there to. Another weird way to start a relationship. So if you like romance and you think the guy is endearing because he decided not to sleep with her, then this is for you. We got boy singing. Sometimes the English singing can be off, but a lot of choirs in the world are English and other languages, so it makes sense why they would do it. Although I do wish it was just singing in Japanese, but I'm not terribly mad at the combination. The main conductor is pretty funny because he's so oblivious. Unfortunately, that's not enough to carry the entire anime, since the main singer doesn't really want to make you watch the show and the songs weren't fire enough to make you stay. The nah tier. Just nah. 
Absolute Pig gets reincarnated into a pig and gets a pretty girl that can hear his thoughts. Yeah, that's the entire anime. The gift of the anime just keeps on giving. The comedy is all perverted things, so if that's not your jam, just go ahead and skip this one. But if that sounds interesting, his whole goal is to try to get his body back as a pig in a magical world, along with a beautiful girl. There's nothing particularly bad about the anime. If the story and the comedy doesn't jive with you, then it's not going to work out. Since the comedy revolves around him saying gross things, then she's willing to do it, but then he tells her that's not really what he wants, so that just becomes part of the shtick. But overall, it's meh. Typical Isekai here, you get reincarnated into the wrong world, and you run into a companion, as the story goes on from there. The animation is not good, and there really isn't a story so far other than just to make your way around the world, but she does have Zowordo to just stop time to check the walkthrough, which is actually hilarious. Imagine Darwin's game, but with even worse animation. Yeah, that's what you're gonna get here. An actually interesting premise of joining an esports team, but the game looks awful. People were calling it a trash version of Valorant, but even that's being too generous. I guess bonus points for making the game look like something you could actually make. Unfortunately, it's nothing people want to watch. So... This is a decisive one for folks. The romance between someone who raised you while one is 15 and one is 26? Uh, do it that what you will, but this was too much for me to enjoy. Plus the guy looks boring and flat, they wanted to give him a stoic feeling, but he looks awful. So yeah, this is a skip for me. So that's all the premieres ranked and where I think each anime will fall at the end of the season. Did you find the new anime here? Let me know what you think about my list and anything else anime below. Am I incredibly wrong? and put your favorite anime too low? Or am I batting a thousand? As we all know this is a perfect list and there's absolutely nothing out of place or wrong. But thank you for sticking to the end. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and watch another one of my videos as I talk about anything and everything animated. And be sure to come back when I rank the intros and outros for the new anime this season since we got some bangers to look at and add to our playlist. But this has been Anime Disrobed and the premieres of each fall 2023 anime has officially been disrobed. Now, I'm also to catch up on some sleep. There's just too much anime out this season.